Hello, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I didn't know which one to choose, so I'm saying it all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our trading psychology session. I am so excited to be here, and we are so excited to deliver this to you. So first of all, let's get a few housekeeping things out of the way. I want to first of all update you what is going to happen with our trading psychology sessions. So we will be running a series of webinars, of workshops, uh, we will write blogs for you, and we will generate general Q&A questions uh, where I personally can support you, give you advice and tips on the things that you might be struggling with in terms of your trading psychology and trading. Now, webinars will be usually sessions where I open up a subject to you and we go into depth of certain psychological theory that's relatable to us in terms of how we function as humans, how it is relatable to us as traders and trading and decision making and so forth and so on. The workshops will be utilized to help you with more hands-on tasks because usually out of a webinar, there will be a task or a worksheet or an action for you to accomplish to make sure that you are going to implement the knowledge that you have learned during the webinar. And I will be there to give you examples, to give you tips, to guide you through. Outside of that, there will be just general Q&A questions where I can support you and where we can just sit down, grab a cup of coffee, cup of tea and talk. And I can be there for you and I can provide you with the information and support that you need. In between, we will be sharing informative blogs with you in regards to trading psychology and everything else that we are going to discuss. So in today's session, I want to open up the subject of psychology in general and kind of give you an insight of how we function as humans on three different levels, biological, psychological, and how we identify in terms of how we view ourselves as people and how that translates into us making certain decisions in the market. I also want to build an actionable roadmap for you to implement based on what you want to achieve in the markets, what you want to achieve as a trader, what you want to achieve financially, what you want to achieve as a person and how you want to grow. And that is going to be a very individual journey for every single one of you. And I want to guide you through it uh, because you will have different goals, you will have different struggles, and none of this information will matter if we don't put it into action. So we're going to build awareness, just as the title says, we're going to build awareness and we are going to help you master yourself to be a successful trader in the market. And all of this is to help you understand yourself better because you can only change things that you fully understand. So I will always build an awareness, open up a topic for you. Then we're going to relate it to trading. And then we are going to action it because a theory without action is just a knowledge. And with just a knowledge and without any positive habits that will form as we gather that knowledge, that information will be just useful. If not useful, useless actually. So I really want to push you outside of your comfort zone and I want to push you into your growth and just really show you how you can achieve that. So let's move on onto the next slide. And this is here. You've got all of the information about what we are going to cover today. So like I mentioned, it's going to be an introduction to trading psychology and just unpacking your human functions on biological, psychological and self-identity level. We will dive into the conscious and subconscious mind and I will show you how your mind on daily basis very much functions on a subconscious subconscious level and how we can consciously take control and feed our subconscious mind in order for us to make decisions in a better way so that kind of goes into decision making processes thought patterns and controlling our emotions as traders which is one of the most significant parts when it comes to trading but also understanding where the emotions come from and of course I will empower you with strategies with actions I will give you what you need and tell you 
how to do it. And I am asking you to jump in with me into trading psychology and give me that benefit of the doubt and just be faithful that in the series and actions that I'm going to ask you to do to implement them. Because I tell you one thing from the get-go, you are risking nothing by trying the things that I'm going to recommend to you here, by meditating, by perhaps doing different things that we're going to really dive into, you're not risking anything. The only thing that may actually happen, you will gain a lot out of it. Then we are going to go into charting your trading journey and bridging that gap from where you are right now in terms of being a trader and where you want to be. Because we all have our goals and successes that we want to achieve, but it is about building that successful roadmap and taking step-by-step -step process and engaging into a step-by-step -step process on a daily basis to get us closer to the goal. Once we implement significant strategies to get you closer to your goal, you will start focusing more on your performance, on cultivating positive habits rather than being so attached to the outcome of each trade that you engage in. So we really want to shift your focus by implementing all of those things. I will provide you with worksheets uh, and I will provide you with a task to think about that we are going to action actually on Tuesday during our workshop, because like I said, workshops are the space where we can discuss things in more detail in terms of what it is that we actually have to do with the knowledge that we had been given. And all of that will be shifting you into performance um, kind of mindset. And I will introduce to you daily reflections and how to reflect, how to score yourself on a daily basis and how to assess yourself on a daily basis and how that can help you to recognize certain patterns in your trading, in your emotions, in your lifestyle, in your fatigue levels, because all of those things outside of the trading and within trading have a significant impact on how we view ourselves. So now let's move into psych biology of trading. Okay, so now let's talk about the biology, sorry, not psychology, biology first. And I don't want to give you a full on science lesson on, you know, how things work in terms of the chemicals in our brain, etc. But I want to give you the basics and I want to highlight um, kind of the foundation of how we function and how the hormones get released into our brain due to different environments that we are in, environments such as the charts as well, and that how that releases different chemicals that are flooding our bodies, our emotions, and our actions. So again, it's all about building that awareness and understanding what works, what doesn't work, what might be happening in a certain situation? And as we have that awareness, we can kind of build in the coping mechanisms, techniques to help ourselves. So first of all, let's talk about dopamine. And dopamine is a big one when it comes to traders because it is all about how we perceive and receive pleasure and reward and what motivates us essentially. And it is responsible also for enjoyment. And if you think about it, at the moment, we live in a society that is filled with quick dopamine hits. So even if you think about your phones and social media, we live in a society of genuinely seven seconds attention span because people scroll on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok, Facebook, whatever the social media platform is, and their attention span is really, really short. They just want more, more, more. Every time you scroll, you get new dopamine hit, new dopamine hit, new dopamine hit. So the same, because we live in that society, the same started to translate into the markets. And because, just generally speaking, let me just highlight one thing. As humans, 
first of all, we are very reward driven individuals. Okay. And number two, there is a reason for it. And let me explain before I go deeper into the neurotransmitters is your brain's job is to protect you and keep you alive on daily basis. Your brain's job is not to keep you happy, is not to do any of that sort. So this is the reason why when your brain on the charts perceives something as danger, okay, which is a loss in the market, which is a missed opportunity, which is your account, challenge account, a funded account being in drawdown or your trade being in drawdown, your brain immediately switches into fixing mode because your brain wants to protect you. So this is how all of those neurotransmitters that are essentially like connections in your brain that are firing together. Think of it as like electricity that is passing one signal to another signal. And the more the signals are exchanged, those connections become stronger and stronger. So this is the reason why we have to take that conscious decision to unwire our brain, to weaken those connections that are stopping us from progressing as traders and rewire to different connections that are more effective and productive for us to be a trader. So one of those is dopamine because as we live in a society where we are very dopamine driven and your brain is also very reward driven, in trading that doesn't work because in trading, you have to suppress the need of the dopamine and teach your brain. Literally, I want you to think of your brain as a separate entity. You need to teach your brain and say to it, we need to delay that dopamine release. It is okay to be uncomfortable and not get that dopamine hit straight away. And then if we are going to delay that immediate gratification, we are going to get long-term result. But because your brain is trying to protect you, your brain will make you think and always trying to convince you that it is okay to focus on short-term results, even if the long-term result is going to be harmful to you. And this is where we need to make that change. So dopamine will always, if it's running high in your brain, it will always make you seek for the reward and this is where the whole risk to reward and chasing the market and the potential you know trigger of greed comes in or trying to catch your losses or you know chase the market it all is due to that dopamine urge in your brain and searching for that high because Think about even, again, social media, every time you scroll and you get a new video, it's a new high that your brain is experiencing. So this is where in markets, your brain is essentially seeking for the same. And it can also lead to, especially after winning streaks as well, to overconfidence, over leveraging, and then traders just genuinely lose themselves in there. The second one is adrenaline. And adrenaline is very much uh, responsible for your fight and flight response. So it is essentially when your brain perceives danger, like I said to you before, which could be a loss in the market, which could be something happening in your environment, in your life, then the fight and flight uh, response is essentially your nervous system that is either going to make you charge at things, run away from things, or freeze, okay? And that comes very much from the survival instinct, and all of us work differently. And this is where, you know, from looking at the survival instincts, this is where the stress, when you get short-term stress, okay, and your heart starts beating faster, and you get a little bit more anxious, and the adrenaline is pumping through your body. This is to prepare you to defend yourself or to fight the predator from the survival perspective, right? So in the short term, it actually can be effective because a lot of sports people experience adrenaline and it helps them perform. But when it's prolonged and the situation is stressful, then it can really affect your decision making because it can really trigger stress and anxiety and if you are feeling anxious 
your stress level goes up, which is a cortisol. Cortisol is responsible stress. When stress goes up, the frontal lobe of your brain here is responsible for logic and for decision making. And when your stress runs high and emotions run high, this part of your brain switches off. So this is where when you are for a prolonged period of time feeling anxious, nervous, over leveraging, going through a losing streak, etc., you need to break that cycle and you need to find ways of helping yourself to cope with the situation in order for you to regain that logical thinking, those logical thinking patterns rather than think emotionally about it. Then we have serotonin and serotonin is very much just responsible for well-being. So a lot of people who may suffer from some mental health problems, they may have actually um, lower levels or higher levels of serotonin because it just has to be right. Um, and it just helps you to make stable decisions, okay? And then we have endorphins. And endorphins are almost like a natural painkiller. And endorphins can help you manage stress and decision-making. Now, interestingly, now let's connect it to adrenaline and endorphins and how we can, with endorphins, press down adrenaline so then your nervous system is more leveled out so exercise is a natural boost of endorphins in your body and genuinely 95 percent of people who exercise or go to the gym no one ever after the exercise came out of the gym and said that they feeling bad that they in terms of the emotions that they feeling worse than when they walked into the gym majority of the time whether they wanted to come or not at the end of the training session they usually feel better the mood is lifted and that is because the endorphins are increased they are running through their body making you happier and also decreasing the adrenaline in your body which is responsible for your nervous system feeling anxious and, and and all of that and therefore reducing it so now if you think about it one of the methods this is just to connect the dots and give you the examples one of the methods for one of the traders that i have worked with was every time he took a stop loss first of all he was not observing the chart secondly he would set an alert and then observe it on his phone. And if the alert for the stop loss was hit and triggered, then he would drop down to the floor and do push-ups. Because as he found out that he experienced a stop loss, which was one of his main triggers to kind of spiral out of control in the markets and start chasing the markets, he knew this is where he needs to start managing himself. And in order to manage himself, we implemented exercise technique because through the exercise, then he would lower down his nervous system firing, and then his emotions would be more stable. And then after an hour or so, he would go back to the chores, he would then analyze why did he lose, and then perhaps plan another trade. So I'm trying to highlight to you how there are different chemicals that are involved in how we function as humans, but we can have control over how they're going to fire, and whether we're going to get flooded or not. Now, some people are maybe more prone to fight and flight response, and they may be more anxious in general, which is fine, because that is the reason why, essentially, trading is such an individual journey, because as much as we are all human beings, we are also very different, and we're going to actually talk about it when we talk about self-identity. But some people biologically will be more prone to anxiety, to stress, to dopamine, to happiness. That's all right. As long as you are honest in front of yourself and treat the emotions that come up, like frustration, like fear, like anger, like sadness, treat this information as signals. Emotions are not there to suppress. Everybody who tells you, Ah, oh, you shouldn't be emotional when you're trading. Yes, of course, when you are feeling emotional, you shouldn't be trading, but those emotions are unlikely to disappear. We are likely to be able to control them. We are likely to be able to put techniques into place to reduce the intensity of those emotions and not act on those emotions. But those emotions actually are very useful. They are signaling processes by telling you, 
When I hit a stop loss, I feel this emotion. When I over leverage, I feel this emotion. When I take profit and the market continues in, in my direction, I feel anger. Like all of those things, all of those emotions are telling you something about what kind of neurotransmitters are firing in your brain. What is your trigger? And what are the things that we can do to help you implement strategies to control those emotions and not respond in the markets in perhaps as emotional manner and self-destructive manner. So let's dive into psychology, the favorite topic of mine. And it's just so wonderful that we actually have that information and we can use it to our advantage. And let me tell you another thing about the brain. So number one, from biology, you know that your brain your brain's job, rather, is to make you survive. It's to keep you alive, not to make you happy, not to make you feel any emotion, but for you to be alive. That's it. The second thing from psychological perspective is that your brain loves familiarity. Your brain doesn't like uncertainty. It doesn't like it because immediately from the survival instinct perspective, it's kind of putting it in an uneasy way about what is going to happen next, right? So if you think about our job as traders, we are undergoing and putting ourselves in a situation that our brain doesn't like, doesn't accept. And this is the reason why we need to spend time working on trading psychology to teach ourselves and teach our brain and say, look, it is okay. I'm going to show you that despite of not knowing what is going to happen, we are going to be okay because there are risk management techniques, because we have technical edge in the market, because we are working on our trading psychology. There are a lot of different things that come into play. And let me just highlight very strongly that trading psychology is extremely important, but so is technical analysis and risk management. All of those three things are a compound of your trading edge and your success in the markets. And all three need to be cultivated and looked after. And one doesn't go without another. All of those are just as equally important. But let's go back to this. So if you think about it, our job as traders is to sit every single day in front of the charts and try to predict whether the price is going to go up or the price is going to go down. We are genuinely trying to predict something that hasn't happened yet. We have some data and some information from the past, but we have no idea what is going to happen in the next hour, four hours, or in a day. So the task itself is very anxiety provoking and it puts your brain outside of the comfort zone. And because it puts your brain outside of the comfort zone and your brain may not be used to being outside of the comfort zone, this is where from the get-go, from the moment you sit at your chart, you may be feeling already stressed or anxious and not sure about what to do next. This is the reason why it is so important to have certain rules about certain patterns, about your technique in the market, because your job as a trader is to repeat the same over and over again and allow for probabilities to play in your favor. But in order for you to do that, your brain has to accept it. Because if your brain will not accept the fact and for what trading is, that it is for taking profit, but also for losses, for break even trades, for missed opportunities, for not being able to attend to the market because you might be at work or with family and all of those things. Until your brain doesn't fully accept it, you will be struggling over and over again. So this is where, it's one of my favorite topics because this is where we actually get to change our brain's percep perception. And I am going to show you how, okay? So I want you to think about this and what happens in the markets and kind of how we work as humans and what we don't think about and what we should think about in order to implement positive changes. So what happens in a market is you will receive, receive a trigger and that trigger in a market might be a stop loss. After you, um, after you experienced a trigger in the market, then you will experience an emotion. 
Okay, so let me just write quickly emotion. And that emotion, again, it could be anger, it could be frustration, could be sadness, could be a lot of different things, disappointment, so forth and so on. And after you experience the emotion, this is where behavior comes into play. Therefore, your choices and what you are going to do next. So usually there is a pattern of a stop loss or missed opportunity. There is a big feeling of frustration in a trader followed by potentially self-destructive behaviors like chasing the market, over leveraging in the market, over trading, et cetera, et cetera. However, in between the trigger and the emotion, there is a very important process that comes into play, and that is your thoughts. And I'm going to put that as TH, your thoughts. And your thoughts are very interesting. Your thoughts split in between subconscious mind and conscious mind, okay? Your subconscious mind is essentially your autopilot. So everything that you do on autopilot, like even let's say brushing your teeth or the things that you do around the house, even driving, you know? When you drive, eventually when you're a new driver, you are consciously engaging in a process of driving, especially when you have manual and looking on the road and what is happening and you know all of those things you have to take like in you into your conscious mind into consideration when you're making decisions but eventually as you become an experienced driver all of those things are just automated and sometimes as an experienced driver you may drive from point a to b and you didn't really think about how you were driving you were just you know thinking about other things and that is normal so this is exactly what is happening here and interestingly 90% of the decisions that we make in a day are driven by your subconscious mind. 90%. Imagine you are literally majority of your life running on autopilot and you make those, you know, what we call instinct, but it's all your subconscious based on previous experiences, making the same decision over and over again. On top of that, as we experience around 70,000 70, thoughts per day, okay, 90% of those thoughts, according to Dr. Joe Dispenza, 90% of those thoughts are recycled from the day before. So what does that mean? That means that we are just stuck in the same loop over and over again if we are stuck in the same loop in the in the way that we think about ourselves about the markets about success about our decisions emotions etc that is the reason why we are stuck in the same situation over and over and over again and we can't snap out of it we can only do it when we use the capacity of the 10 percent of our conscious mind and consciously make decisions to implement new positive habits, new things into our day. And only that way we can change the trajectory of the way we think, the way we experience emotions and the way that we behave. So the filtering process between the trigger, let's say the stop loss in the market and the thought process, the thought is filtering what happened and then based on that filtration process, you experience an emotion, okay? So that filtering process, if you think about it, is all about perception and how you view the situation and understand the situation in your thoughts. And that will dictate how you feel and how you're going to behave. Because very often, and that is actually the case in the market, you will have two traders experiencing the same situation in the market, but you may get two completely separate responses. Because so there will be one trader that might be still making decisions based on those intense emotions, and you will have other trader interpreting the situation and thinking, I know I can't do this. Okay, it's a loss. Let me just walk away and making completely two separate decisions. And that is all based on that filtering of how we perceive things, how we understand things and how we think about things. So this is the reason why we need to 
rewire our brain. So if you think about it, the subconscious is wired with all of those biological neurotransmitters we talked about, dopamine, adrenaline, serotonin, endorphins, all of that is just going over and over and over and over again in your brain, right? So this is why I am such a huge advocate for morning routine, for positive habits, for consciously putting yourself in uncomfortable situations on a daily basis as a human and as you implement those disciplined actions into your day you will teach your brain that it is okay to feel uncomfortable that it is okay to experience that discomfort to understand the long-term gain and as you do that over and over and over and over again, eventually that will translate into your subconscious mind. So I want to give you an example. An example would be a child learning to tie the shoelaces, all right? So we all were there at some point in our childhood. We had no idea how to tie the shoelaces. But now when we tie the shoelaces, we don't think about it. It's done, done. It takes a second. But as a child, it could have been taking us even minutes and we're trying to figure out how I do this, how I do that. And that process would be like a repeated process that we do over and over and over and over and over again. So that is the engagement of the conscious mind. We did not know how to do it and we engaged the conscious mind to tie the shoelaces and then eventually it clicks and the child all of a sudden knows how to tie the shoelaces. And that is when the process of tying the shoelaces has moved into the subconscious mind. And for the rest of your life, you know how to tie the shoelaces. This is precisely what we have to do with our decision-making, with controlling our emotions, thoughts, and behaviors in the markets as traders. We need to practice mindfulness. We need to practice awareness of our thoughts we need to practice awareness of what emotions we are actually experiencing we need to practice discipline of marking your charts at the end of uh, the day at analysis at sticking to your plan at putting yourself like i said consciously outside of your comfort zone and as you will do that over and over again like don't expect to do it once and that's it you'll be done no it will be like this tying shoelaces process of learning it's like you essentially learning a skill of how to become more conscious about certain things. And as you do that, you will eventually move to the subconscious mind. As it moves into the subconscious mind, this is where the filtering process of experiencing a stop loss, the filtering process is going to take the information from the 90% of your subconscious mind. But because you will have healthier outlook on things, in terms of your thought processes, the emotion that you may experience may not be as intense. It's not going to disappear. You may still frustration. You may still may feel some anger, but it won't be as intense. Instead of it being 100 out of 100, it may be 50 out of 100. But not only that, you will also know and understand that you can't act on that emotion, that this emotion is a signal. And based on that signal, you need to implement a coping technique that is going to help you to maintain yourself in a market and manage your risk effectively. And you will not make decisions impulsively in the markets. Okay. And I will tell you how I do it. And this is why I'm such a huge advocate for a morning routine, because there are a series of things that I do in the morning before I analyze the charts in the markets. And all of those things have a different purpose for me to keep me disciplined, to put me outside of my comfort zone. So I train my brain on a daily basis. Genuinely, from the moment I open my eyes, I think of myself, I am now performing as a trader. To me, in my eyes, I don't, I am not a trader when I just when I sit on the markets to execute and press buy or sell button. I am a trader from the moment I open my eyes at five in the morning. And there are a series of things that I need to perform, just like an athlete. Actually, being an athlete and being a trader really goes hand in hand, in my opinion. But let me tell you. So 
in the morning I would wake up and my mantra is to do something for my brain, for my mind, for my body and for my soul. Those are the three things that I go by. And again, I'm going to share this with you because that works for me. And it will take some trial and error process for you to figure out what works for you, what is going to help you based on the things you need to work on as a trader. So the number one thing that I do, I hydrate. So I drink a glass of water. Let's put one liter, maybe it's a bit less than one liter, but that's what I do. And that is just hydrating myself and doing something for my body. Number two is I do a cold shower. Now, Cold exposure has really taught me discipline. And I will tell you why. Even though cold exposure can give you huge benefits when it comes to your biology and nervous system, it actually helps you to manage your stress levels, anxiety levels. It's good for your skin. It eventually triggers brown cells that help you burn fat. Like there are so many benefits of cold showers. But my main benefit is mental benefit. It is not about doing the cold shower and expecting that, oh, because I'm doing a cold shower, I'm going to become a millionaire. No, but the discipline of doing the cold showers may make me a millionaire because I am consciously every single day, I'm putting myself outside of my comfort zone and I win a fight between me and me. In my mind, I win that fight. So imagine five in the morning, it's still dark outside. When I finish work, usually it's dark outside as well. This morning, I felt tired. I really did not want to do it. And I sometimes stand there and I'm having a pep talk in my head about doing it. Because as you remember why I said about the brain, brain's job is to protect us. So when I am about to go into that freezing cold shower first thing in the morning, my brain will find any excuse to make me not do it and say you are tired or you actually you know fatigued you might be getting a little cold it's not good for you don't do it or maybe tomorrow skip it today and my brain is convincing me my thoughts just not to put me in that short-term discomfort okay whereas I win that fight and this is where I am working on that mental resilience where I do what needs to be done I don't do what I feel like doing because what I feel like doing is not to go in but I go in because I've made that commitment of being disciplined after that which is extremely important why I said to you at the start of this presentation Well, this slide specifically is that we are very reward driven. Okay. So sometimes when you are going to engage in a difficult task, it would be extremely good for you to put and build in a reward system into your day. And actually, we're going to talk in more depth about that when we talk about positive habits, because we're going to definitely go into that topic as well. But as number three, I have my coffee. I love my coffee so much in the morning. And to me, when I'm in that freezing cold shower, I think about that warm cup of coffee. And also when I come out of that shower, I feel on top of the world. I won. My dopamine, the natural dopamine, which natural dopamine is what you want, is kicking in my brain. And I'm like, yes, I've done it. I won. Now, what you have to do sometimes, and this is something I want you to think about, and we're going to talk about it more um, in, in further slides. I want you to already start thinking about how would you reward yourself for the uncomfortable situations that you are going to go through in the markets? Because it would be very effective to do that because then you are not seeking the dopamine from the markets. You've got your dopamine in your environment. And that way you will be more focused on performing in a market instead of looking for rewards in a market and you will be receiving rewards elsewhere. And that is going to shift your mindset into just looking at the markets from performance perspective. Then as number four, as I reward myself with my coffee, because I would have my coffee anyway, but I tricked my brain to think if you have a cold shower, you have a coffee. Number four is I meditate. And, you know, 
I guess morning routines or sometimes meditations and stuff like that people may say oh yeah every coach will tell you to do this and that but I believe there is a reason for it because first of all there is science that actually backs it up and number two it works because we have implemented it ourselves as people and also we see our clients and traders that we work with that implementing it and how much it works because the meditation it is not about sitting down cross-legged and humming it's not about that it's about giving your time or giving your mind time to process things okay to process things and to quiet the mind and when you are going to allow for your mind to process things from day before or to set an intention for the day this is where your cognitive functioning, emotional intelligence and decision making is going to increase because you are going to come into the market from the stable point of view in terms of your thoughts being aligned with your intention and what you want to get rather than your thoughts. Like I said to you, 90% of your thoughts are recycled from the day before. So bringing that consciousness to your thoughts and thinking about what is going on here the awareness is going to majorly help you and as number five I do breathing techniques Wim Hof and again I found it useful because sometimes I spend a lot of time on, on my desk trading speaking with clients working da -da 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 -da, and a lot of stress is in our bodies so then I would do breathing techniques and where there is oxygen, you know, your anxiety or any stresses really diminish. And uh, so I use all of the techniques to help me with that uh, first thing in the morning. And as number six, I would go for a walk. I would go outside because I want to actually expose myself to the daylight before I start, you know, working on the charts or coaching, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this is what works for me. And this is what I found as most effective. And I have done different things. I used to exercise in the morning, et cetera. But now I'd rather to do that throughout the day. Now I have some of my traders who would be exercising in the morning or do shadow boxing or, you know, go to the gym. And that would be also a form of meditation for them because as they are exercising, they would be listening to a meditation or to motivational speech. And they actually allow themselves to process things. So, there will be different things that will be working for you, but I want you to develop something that is consciously going to put you in a discomfort because sometimes it is not about what you are going to do in that morning routine, especially at first, because later on you will want to make it better. It will just come naturally to you. But it's actually about making the habit and being disciplined enough to do it because, again, uh, it is the same thing over and over again. People are very good at starting things, but not maintaining things because to in order to start something, you need motivation and motivation is just an emotion. But in order to continue with something, you need the discipline. And, you know, with the morning routine, sometimes you will have a bad night's sleep and you will not get a lot of hours of sleep. And this is when it's so easy to say, no, nah, I don't want to do it. But probably during the times when you're experiencing some external stresses from your life, not trading, but life, from your job, from your relationship, from not sleeping well, or just generally speaking, you're feeling anxious for whatever might be happening. This is probably when you need your morning routine the most, where you can actually align your body, your mind, your soul, and actually, you know, do things that you need to do. Some people would pray in the morning, and that is also a form of meditation and gratitude and affirmations. And all of those things are so significant, and all of those things matter because we are all different, and we all will have different things that will be working for us. So... I really want you to implement a morning routine and think about the morning routine. And actually, your morning routine will be very much connected about what we are going to discuss in future slides, especially, especially when we will be talking about the roadmap to achieving your goals. So number three thing that is extremely important in trading psychology outside of biology and psychology is your self-identity. Because... Your self-identity is essentially a compound of memories, 
and experiences of what you have experienced in life and that creates your belief system so at times if the only thing let's say through the learning process you experienced is stop losses in the markets which is natural as a trader that is learning because then eventually you would become a break-even trader eventually profitable trader etc but if that is the only thing you know this is sometimes when it adapts as somebody's identity and they think of themselves and say to themselves oh do you know what I am a losing trader or oh, I always blow my challenge in phase two I always blow my challenge after I get funded or I never get to the first payout and people essentially embody that and repeat that to themselves over and over again so this is where actually as one of the main techniques that works is affirmations okay but before we go into affirmations, I want to actually show you the power of your brain, okay, with a very, very simple exercise. So bear with me here. I want you, and this is the exercise, it's assuming that all of you like pizza. If some of you don't like pizza, this will not work, but just please bear with me. So I want you to close your eyes, okay, and I want you to think about your favorite pizza, whether that is thick base or thin base. I want you to think of all of that cheese. I want you to think about all of your, all of your favorite toppings. I want you to think about the delivery man bringing that pizza to your door. You are grabbing that warm box and you are, go, you are putting the pizza in the kitchen. You open the box and you can smell the smell of fresh pizza. Then you grab one triangle and you bite right into it and you can taste all of your favorite toppings, the melted cheese and a wonderful, wonderful dough. And then you consume it. Now, my question is to all of you, how many of you felt that the saliva in your mouth has increased and you actually started fancying pizza. I can see a lot of yeses, yes, 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 yes. Now I want to order pizza, exactly. So what I want to show you here is that with the power of your thoughts and not even you thinking about your thoughts, me telling you what to think about and imagine in your brain, you have triggered a biological reaction in your body where your saliva started increasing in your mouth. Saliva increases in our mouths to help us digest the food where potentially the hormone of hunger has been, which is called ghrelin, has been released into your body and now you start to fancy pizza more. This is the power of your thoughts. So now imagine if you say to yourself negative things over and over and over again, this is what you are encoding within yourself. And when you will start your day with thinking about yourself in a negative manner, just as we have increased the hunger levels in you through biology, through just what I said to you, a spoken word, then imagine... If you speak to yourself negatively, you are from the get-go starting your day being more stressed, feeling like failure, feeling like you're not achieving things because you've attached yourself to the identity of what happened yesterday, a month ago, etc. So I want you to forgive yourself. I want you to make a new start here with what we are doing with you and for you to support you through trading psychology. And I want you to utilize affirmations and to actually think about positive things before you come into your charts. And this could be something that you could implement into your daily routine. Now, the reason for that is because, like I said to you before, we are a compound of different personality types different sets of limiting beliefs. We all have limiting beliefs. Different backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, religious backgrounds, different relationships. 
different way of upbringing, different relationship of money. Different cultures think about money differently. And I tell you one thing, I'm from Poland and the older generations until today think that you only should make money if you work really, really hard. They don't understand the concept of what you work for three hours and you make that much money. Like That doesn't make any sense. All of those things have a huge impact. And we will go into the topic of limiting beliefs and we will go into the topic of affirmations and we will go into all of that in so much detail through our further webinars and workshops etc cetera, etc cetera. but at the moment what i want to do is to bring in the awareness i want you to start thinking about those things how are you impacted by all of those things and to really start thinking oh yeah i have been stuck in that cycle over and over again. And this could be one of the reasons why I'm unable to move on. So that is now like a, a wrap up of understanding your biological self, psychological self, and also yourself from the self identity level. And what are different things through morning routines, from affirmations, the power of your thoughts, the discomforts, the dopamine, you know, like how all of those things have an impact of our decision-making in the market. And this is the reason why it's so important to acknowledge those things and start to work on ourselves because you could have the best trading strategy at hand, but it is the trader that executes the strategy. If the strategy was maybe executing itself, that wouldn't be a problem, but it is the trader, a person, with different experiences, with different emotions, with different mood, with different habits, with different self-perception that is sitting behind a computer or their phone and that person executes the trade. And that's why it's so important to acknowledge all of those factors when it comes to trading psychology. So let's move into the second part. And this is where we covered the first one. Now we move into the second part about your roadmap to success. So essentially it is an effective way, my way of teaching you an effective way of achieving your goals because we all are somewhere here and we want to be somewhere here. And, and, and sometimes people are guilty of, of that, that they want to jump from zero to 100, but there are actually 100 steps that you need to take in order to get here. And those steps should be measured and those steps should be conscious because we talked about subconscious and conscious. They need to be conscious and they need to be followed with purpose. Because like I mentioned to you before, it is very easy to start for somebody to do something based on the emotion or just the environment. So at the simplest term would be new year resolutions. At the start of January of every single year, everybody has this the, the best intentions for their health, wealth, for their fitness, for their mindset. Everybody is on that new me journey, but only a few actually accomplish it. And in December, they look back and they like, yeah, I've done very well. But majority somewhere in the, on the way stop because they don't measure their progress and they don't establish a clear path to their achievement. So this is where we want to make that change for you because you could have the greatest intention in your heart of wanting to be where you want to be at the end of the year, et cetera, et cetera. And those people have those intentions that they start in January or let's say on their fitness journey at the gym. They, they really, really do. But that can only be achieved through appropriate things being put into place because majority who made some new year resolutions at the start of 2023 when 2024 will arrive, they will be still stuck in the same situation that they were in at 2023, even though they had the best intentions. And I will explain to you how it works, okay? And, and again, I love my analogies, but it is like providing you with a GPS. So let's say I want to travel from London to Glasgow. 
okay? And I have the GPS. So yes, the journey may actually be long. Let's say it's going to take eight hours. I actually don't know how long it takes, but let's say it's going to take eight hours. But with the GPS, I have the exact roads and even roads, if there are some roadworks and some kind of, you know, things that will stand in my way, I can drive around it. But I have a clear path of what I need to do step by step in order to get here. Because I have that correct path, I can approach that road at different speeds. I can go 40 miles per hour, but I can also go 80 miles per hour. And then I can slow down to go 50 miles per hour. And you know what? Sometimes I can pause and actually rest. But at the end of the day, whatever speed I'm going to go at and whether I'm going to rest or not, I know my roadmap and I know that I'm going to get there. And that kind of relates to trading because there will be times you will be on fire in trading and you will have the most amazing winning streak. But there will be times that there will be some things that will come at you at your nine to five job or maybe in your life. And you will have to pause with trading or slow down with trading, or you will take consecutive losses, or you might be in drawdown. That's okay, because that is all part of your journey. And you've got a roadmap of knowing exactly what you need to do and how you need to do it to get to where you want to be. Whereas when you don't have that GPS and you want to get from London to Glasgow, and you know it takes that eight hours, you might be driving 200 miles per hour, okay? But if you don't know what turns to, to take, if you don't know the road there, you can go at the highest speed you may want to go and you will still not get there in comparison to the person who has the GPS and is just going 14 miles per hour because they will slow and steady, step by step, get eventually to their goal because they head in there. But you might be killing yourself going 200 miles per hour, but you may be just going around in circles and you're actually getting no closer to the destination. Not only that, you are actually putting yourself at risk of being uh, burnt out. You're putting yourself more at risk of crashing and that is the same with trading. You're putting yourself at risk of crashing your capital, of crashing your mental well-being and never getting to where you want to be because you both are driving the same car. You both have, therefore, the same strategy, let's say, and the skills and the ability. But if you don't have that GPS to get you there, this is where the struggle is going to happen and you will never get to where you want to be. So this is where we're going to change that for you. And this is the reason why we are doing what we are doing, because we want to take your hand and guide you. And we want to provide you with knowledge, skills and support for you to get to where you want to be individually as traders. OK, so this is where we're going to make a start. And then on Tuesday, when we do our workshop at 6 p.m. UK time, I will give you more details, okay? And until then, though, I want you to think about your long-term goals. So, you know, like I've given an example of going from London to Glasgow, you need to think, what is your Glasgow? What is your goal? And when you are thinking about your goals, I want you to think long-term goals. So, look, long-term goal will be different for everybody. Um, you may think about next 12 months. You may think about next six months, but just whatever the time frame is, establish it. So establish what you want to perhaps achieve by end of this year or first quarter of next year, et cetera, et cetera. So I want you to think about three key things, okay? And first of all is your desire. Like, what do you really want? Desire. And I want you to be very specific, I don't want you to just think, oh, I want to be funded with funding pips. No, I want you to be specific by how, how much? $10,000, 20, 50, 100K. Like be very specific. I want to be funded with funding, funding pips with such and such an amount. Or I want to make my first withdrawal with funding pips for X, Y, and Z. 
be very specific, okay? And I would suggest to pick about maximum three long-term goals because those long-term goals will be very much broken down into actionable things, into milestones that we're going to measure in two months and a month and also into daily habits. So don't overwhelm yourself. Set yourself either one-by-one one goal, long-term goal, or think about three maximum. And it doesn't have to be all trading related. It could be also fitness related, health related, like whatever you wish for it to be. But one of them definitely should be trading related because this is why we are here, right? Number two, I want you to think about why do you want it? What drives you, your drive? And you know what? I don't want the tip of the iceberg. I want freedom. I want out, out, out of my nine to five. As much as those are valid things to think about, there is a deeper reason. And we all hold that deeper reason within our hearts as traders. We all do it for the purpose of ourselves, both our families, friends, what we want to achieve in terms of goals, what we want to provide to other people. So I really want you to think about that and write it down. And when you're writing down those things, I genuinely want you to either take pen and write it on the paper or use your computer or your phone, whatever you want to, whatever comes easier to you. But I want you to just empty your mind onto that piece of paper, whether that's electronic or actual paper. I want you to just go like as if you will feel lighter on your chest at the end of it. Every single drive that you can think of put it down there okay and number three which is so so important is do what do you need to do to achieve your desire because this is going to trigger that motivation that discipline but this is here what the discipline is actually going to be what are the things that you need to do so i give you training related example and you would say all right well i want to have 100k with funding pips by december then your drive is you know it could be very personal in terms of supporting yourself your family etc etc now do what do you need to do then you can think okay so what do i need to do in order to get here well i need to pass phase one and two in terms of my challenges Okay, where am I at now? Well, at the moment, I may not be able to afford phase one challenge yet. So then I need to, you know, work harder at my job or do some extra shifts in order to earn money in order to buy it. Number two example, this is just an example, by the way. Number two example could be, well, I don't actually have a trading plan. So before I approach this, I should really put like a very strong trading protocol into place where I am very sure about my analysis and my routine on the charts of my entries, how I manage my trades, when I exit my trades. And only then when I collect data, I will be able to tell what risk I should use in order to accomplish phase one and two and then get to where I want to be. So you really have to think about what are the things you need to do. Okay, Paulina suggested that I should become more disciplined on a daily basis. So maybe I should implement a daily routine. Maybe I should start going to the gym. Maybe I should start journaling my thoughts. It could be anything and everything. But I want you to just, again, empty your mind. Write everything you can think of. So then you can kind of, you know, when you look at, when you brainstorm, essentially, it's like a brainstorming exercise. You look at it and then you can prioritize and be like, okay, actually, risk management is my number one priority because it doesn't matter, you know, about the challenges and any of this if I don't manage my risk. So you really have to prioritize it. And as you prioritize it, then you can kind of look at it and cultivate a plan. And remember, I want your goals to be specific measurable which we are going to put measure into place achievable i don't want you to say oh yeah by monday i want to have x y and z if it's not realistic then obviously we won't be able to get there and time frame is good to measure your performance and to be able to establish you know have i overachieved something have i underachieved something what were the reasons you know you may have a plan and capability and skills to pass phase one in a month 
but there might be some things that will come your way from your work, from your life, et cetera, et cetera, that will actually stop you from doing that. And that is okay, you know, and, and then we can establish that. Okay, not to worry, that's fine. Let's continue with the strategy. Let's continue with the original plan. The reasons why you may have underachieved is not because you haven't done the things you're supposed to, but it is actually because of circumstances. Like there is always a reason for things uh, whether it's a good reason or bad reason, but it's worth measuring things and being aware of why certain things are happening. Because if you discover that it's not out of your own fault, then you will feel a lot better about it and you'll be able to just focus on your next steps. Whereas if you are unaware why it all happened, you may start self-blaming yourself, which then will really have an impact on how you make decisions in a market. So on Tuesday, what we are going to do OK, I want you to think about. So let's go back your long term goals, like what you want to achieve, your des achieve your desire, drive and what you need to do. And then on Tuesday, let me just move it. And then on Tuesday, we are going to focus on 60 days, 60 days milestone. Hold on. 60 days milestone. OK. Oh, why are you not writing? Hold on, guys. There we are. 60 days milestone and then 30 days, days milestone. Apologies. And then weekly kind of goals that you will be looking at. So essentially we are working backwards, like we said. So if you need or if you wish to have, let's say, funded account, 100K funded account. OK, so then we need to establish. All right. Within 60 days, I want to pass phase one or phase two. All right. So this would be your milestone. But then we need to think about the things you need to do to get there. So we will start working backwards and measuring your risk. And then what would be your 30 day milestone? It might be to actually implement your trading plan and, you know, to work on your trading plan. And then in order to work on your trading plan, what would you do daily? Well, I, I'm going to nine to five, but then every day for half an hour you might be back testing and for the second half an hour you might be working on your trading plan and then you know an hour every day equates to seven hours of working on your trading plan for let's say 30 days that is 14 20, 28 hours that you have worked on your trading plan so then you will be ready to go for the phase one and two within 60 days can you see how we are working backwards of Okay, this is the goal. This is the milestone. Those are the things that I need to accomplish. This is what I need to do on a daily basis around everything that is already happening in my life. Because I would rather for you to cultivate time 15 minutes per day, half an hour per day on working on yourself, whether that's trading psychology or your technicals, rather than trying to lump it all, let's say, over the weekend and then guaranteed over the weekend something will come up and then over the weekend it just seems instead of doing it for half an hour a day or an hour a day you will be like oh yeah I'm going to spend all Saturday doing it then your brain gets overwhelmed and it's like oh my god that's too much work and some excuses will come up for you not to get it done so I always compare it to like going to the gym because you could either go to the gym let's say an hour per day and let's say to improve your physique, so you are more muscular, et cetera, et cetera. And that is going to be more effective because you are going to do a healthy repetition. And as well as that, your body will have time to recover, to eat well and to grow. And that would be way better than going seven hours in one day because, yes, it is the same amount equally when it comes to a weekly outcome, but doing it all in one go would actually injure you. Um, you would get overworked, you would get over fatigued, your body wouldn't have time to recover, and you wouldn't see as many positive results. So it's exactly the same. And this is where, based on that, like I said, we will build the scorecard where you will be able to self-assess yourself every single day and build that awareness about what is actually happening here. Why am I doing certain things on certain days? And this is where I'm going to go through with you during the workshop. We're going to pull up the worksheets based on your goals. You can bring some goals to me prior and we can break them down for you 
If you don't feel like you want to share it, that's absolutely fine. But if you feel like sharing it, it could actually help you with, you know, cultivating a plan for you. So if you do want to do it, please bring it. And then I will break it down for you and with you. And we can show the rest how they can work with their goals. But essentially, this here, daily self-assessment and scorecard, is going to bring awareness. So you may actually notice that and, and we're going to split it into three things. We're going to split it into daily habits and analysis and into emotions. So we will me measure how well you have done in terms of following your morning routine, let's say. We are going to measure whether you have analyzed the markets and entered the markets or did not enter the market, pardon me, based on your analysis and plans. And then emotions, what type of emotions have you experienced? la di la di la whether it was this or the other now the point is here i don't care about your trading outcome whether you're on minus two percent whether you're on minus three percent whether you took plus five percent profit i don't care about the daily outcome i care about the process and your performance because once this is going well the outcomes will follow okay I really, really, really want to highlight that. And another benefit of it is that you may find that on certain days, on Fridays, you always feel more stressed, you don't stick to your plan, and you struggle to com to complete your morning routine. And then we will look at it and be like, okay, why? Why is that? And you may just find that by Friday, you may just be tired because you've been working all week, you've been taking your kids to school, and you have been trading, and by Friday, you don't any longer have any emotional or logical capacity to trade in the markets, and you become more emotional, and you just give your profits back, and then with a simple terms, we will just cut Fridays out of your trading days, because what we will be doing is we won't be just thinking, oh, maybe you should this, maybe you should that. No, we will be making uh, data-driven decisions and data-driven decisions are going to increase your performance in the markets so that's what we want to focus on and that's why i want you to focus on especially when we are going to do the workshop and really look inwards and really implement that into your daily routine and i know that it's a big ask perhaps but being a professional trader is not just clicking buy and sell in the markets it is also doing all the work before and after and and I know a lot of you are very busy with your lives, but I'm really asking for a little time in the morning, a little time in the afternoon to cultivate that time for your trading job, career, business, instead of scrolling on, on our phones, looking at Twitter or other social media platforms or watching something. We can put in that productive time even for 20 minutes, half an hour, and that is going to compound into wonderful things into our life. Okay. So guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is a wrap of our session. Thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate you. All. Thank you for such positive feedback. And I'm very much looking forward to the workshop and stay tuned with us. We will be updating you as we are building the whole trading psychology program for you. And we have so much to share with you and to deliver for you. And we are very much looking forward to it. So thank you so much for being here. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.